studio with me today. I have two gentlemen, Ron Stabell and Pat McCabe, here with me. Uh, We're going to talk about the upcoming Sioux Falls area men's retreat, which will be at Broom Tree Retreat Center in Irene, South Dakota. Um, they, we wanted them to come in and tell us about this retreat because it is something that's growing and, uh, they want to get as many men involved as possible as we can cram into the room that they're having the retreat in, I think. So welcome gentlemen. Thanks for being here with me today. Thanks for the opportunity, Renee. Yeah, you bet. So, um, to get us started, if the two of you would kind of tell me a little bit about yourselves, if you would. So Ron, would you start? Sure. Well, I'm a member of Holy Spirit Parish, have been since 1996. Mm -hmm. My wife and Virginia and I have six children, nine grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. You're busy. I'm a (laughs) uh, financial representative for Principal Financial Group here in Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you are in in Knights of Columbus, too, if I remember right. Knights of Columbus at Holy Spirit, yes. Yeah, good. You're very involved. Yeah. Yes, I am. Because we go to the same parish, so I see Ron Ah. around. (laughs) All right, Pat, how about you? Uh, Yeah, I'm also a member of Holy Spirit Parish. I've been in town six years now. Uh, I grew up in the Twin Cities. Okay. uh, Ended up working in central Minnesota in St. Cloud. Met my wife there. We both were transplants to the area. Okay. Um, Met, got married, started our family. We have three daughters. When our third was on the way, she wanted to get back closer to her family. Mm. So we moved to Sioux Falls in 2015. Okay. And uh, right before our third daughter was born. So now we live in Brandon. Um, been at Holy Spirit the entire time. Uh, joined the men's group as soon as I got to town. Mm-hmm. Ron actually provided me the invitation nice. to, to join the group. Yep. Um, and in that time, I've been more involved with the group and with the retreat. Um, and happy to see this thing grow into where it is today. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys liking Sioux Falls? Brandon, Sioux Falls, both. We love it. <laughs> Good. Um, when we decided to move, it was a discussion that we want to move close to one side of the grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, Sioux Falls was kind of, a, kind of an easy winner. Yep. Um, the busyness of Minneapolis didn't yeah. excite either one of us too much. So we yeah. get up there as much as we can to visit, but we like being here. I think I'm not getting her out of town anytime soon. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. Good. So, um, all right. So let's dive into uh, a little bit about the men's retreat. Um Ron, I think you've been probably working on this men's retreat for quite a while. So will you just give us an overview of what what the retreat is? Be happy to. It's an interactive retreat, Renee, Mm -hmm. which means it's not a silent retreat. Right. And the dates, again, are October 22, Mm -hmm. 23, 24, Mm -hmm. as you mentioned at the Broom Tree Retreat Center near Irene. And we developed this retreat idea many years ago as a way for men to frankly get away yeah. and, and spend a weekend uh, to, as the name implies, to basically surrender, to just to get away and have some time to develop their relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's worked out very, very well over the years. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to say that is to give men kind of a break because a lot of times uh, husbands, fathers, work pretty hard. They feel uh, obviously a lot of responsibility for um, taking care of their families and they need a little, a little time, a little break. And it's a great way to do that. uh, Spending time with God instead of just maybe, I don't know, at a football game, (laughs) football games are great, but God's great too. (laughs) I probably didn't help your description much, did I? (laughs) No, that that hits the nail on the head pretty much for most guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how did this get started? Well, 11 years ago, mm-hmm. when we started our men's group at Holy Spirit, okay. a group of us decided later on that we needed to have a way to get away. Mm-hmm. Broom tree was right there at mm-hmm. our disposal, and we decided we were going to see if it would work. And so we began to recruit men and had success doing so, and it's been Go ongoing now for 10 years. Was it a pretty small group at first? I think the first year we probably had 50 guys show up. Oh, geez, that's actually yeah, pretty yeah, good we for were, the first year. Yeah, we uh, we have some enthusiastic men's group members yeah. who uh, reached out to a lot of guys. Yeah. Is it a mix of ages usually, or is or do you find it to be kind of one area as ages? Pat, what have you seen? Because you're younger than Ron. If you're not watching the video, Pat just, is younger just than Ron. Just a little bit, so. <laughs> It is. It's a, it's a wide range. 
we've had guys in their 20s and then guys in their 70s and I think maybe even 80s. Okay. Um, it shows, I think, the breadth of what men are desiring and in, in the fact that whether they're at home with young kids or their kids are in college or their kids are growing out of the house with their own families, um, every stage of life men are looking for a, a way to, like Ron said, take a step back, get away, and focus on their faith. So right. certainly it it's, leans to be an older crowd because mm-hmm. the younger guys might have more commitments, or sure. at least busier families with kids, and it's you know schools in session and that kind of thing. But um, we have somebody across the board in every age group. Good, good. Um, so, okay, this uh, particular year, you are, um, I, I, just, I guess I call it a theme. You're using St. Joseph, mm-hmm. Terror of Demons, as part of your theme this year. Okay, so I don't know which one of you wants to explain that to me, but why is that part of the retreat, retreat, retreat this year? When we began to plan for this year's retreat, Renee, we started thinking about different themes, and it occurred to us that this is the year of St. Joseph, yes. as declared by our Pope. Number two, he's the patron of the church in the United States, and number three, he's the patron of our diocese. Mm-hmm. And so when I approached our retreat master, Deacon Ralph, with that theme, he came back with Terror of Demons. Mm-hmm. It may be obvious, but men <laughs> have a tendency to need to fight off the devil. Sure. And St. Joseph is the terror of demons. Mm-hmm. So we built around that theme to help the attendees learn more about St. Joseph. Right. As we all know, he never said a word in Scripture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was an incredible, is an incredible model for men. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, to expand on that, the model that he was, like Ron said, he never said a word in Scripture. But all he did was all that was asked of him. Right. To protect the Lord, care for his wife, um, you know, raise the Christ child. So as a husband and father, any man at this retreat, what better role model there is there to look to than a guy who not always know not always knowing why, but followed the direction that the Lord was giving him right. without question. Right. Um, sometimes probably fearful. Oh, but he yeah. but he still did it. And um, think of how different the world would be if, if he had ever, you know, declined the invitation. <laughs> right. So um, in, in the world that we're in today, when we're all being pulled in as many different directions as we can be, to have someone like that to look to, to spend a weekend focusing on, to learn that our role is to, is to discern God's word and follow it. Right. Um, He's the best guy I think we can look to. Yeah, I, I really like how you said that. Did to, he did all he that was asked of him, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes men especially, but we all kind of are trying to do things we think people are expecting us to do, but maybe they're really not, and then we put too much on ourselves. So listening to what God's will is for us and trying to do that specifically, because He's going to have us do all the things we should be doing anyway if we are listening to Him. So, okay, so you have. Um, Deacon Ralph Poyo, did I say that right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Deacon Ralph is going to be leading the retreat. Uh, who is this guy? I have never heard of him. Go ahead, Patrick. So he's led a retreat before. Okay. Um, before I was able to to be at the retreat, um, but he's a dynamic speaker. He's out of Texas. He started uh, New Evangelization Ministries, I believe oh, okay. it's called, um, with the goal being to re-evangelize the faithful. Mm-hmm. Um kind of like we were just mentioning, we're in a fight for our faith every day in today's yeah. world. Um, and he wants to bring that fight back to the to the faithful to, you know, fight off the devil, become faithful, become followers, discern God's word, um, and, you know, to share the truth of the Lord and to serve Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So he sounds like an interesting guy. He's he... a very interesting yeah. guy. He's very forceful in, okay. in, a, in a kind way. Yeah. But as Patrick mentioned... This is his third time to be our retreat master. Mm-hmm. And when we were out recruiting for this year's retreat and would mention that he is our retreat master, those who had been there before, their eyes get big, their pulse rate increases, <laughs> and they, they, they want to sign up because they saw what he could do for us 
in two and a half days. Yeah, sounds like a dynamic speaker. It really is. Mm-hmm. Good. That'll be good for them. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are talking to Ron Stabell and Pat McCabe about the upcoming Sioux Falls area men's retreat. Um, can you each tell me what you have experienced at these retreats? Because you've both obviously been to more than one. You especially, Ron. <laughs> but if you each kind of tell us what you've experienced there, that would be great. Pat, you want to start? Sure. Uh, it's a weekend to leave a lot of the day-to-day worries behind for just a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, not to dismiss them, but to focus on yourself and your faith. Um, to to become closer with the Lord and in turn, allowing yourself to come home a better father and a husband, mm-hmm. to learn about your faith, uh, to even learn about yourself a little bit. It's amazing when you have some candid discussions. That's what's nice about this being an interactive mm. retreat. You get to talk to the other men that are there in a way that you might not otherwise do. And you learn about some of the struggles they're having. And then a lot of times it falls in line with some of the struggles you're having. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a bond that's built with faithful men that know they're in it for each other. They want to see each other become better husbands and fathers, become better men. Um, And you walk out of there after mass in a a session on Sunday morning with a new energy to take back into your life, into your work, into your home, and try to carry that forward. It's Mm -hmm. not something that gets done and left when you leave Broomtree. Right. Um, the, The energy as you leave is something you carry with you that, you know, takes you on for the next days and weeks and months um, as you go through your life. Very good. Ron, how about you? Everything that Patrick just said is certainly I agree with. Broom Tree is a beautiful Mm -hmm. place. Yeah. And I I would suggest to anybody, if you ever get a chance, if you haven't been there before, visit Broom Tree. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. You just did a beautiful job putting it together. Yeah. So that's, Another part of the attraction for me, mm-hmm. just that, and it's only 50 miles from Sioux Falls. Right. <laughs> but as Pat said, the fellowship among the men over that weekend, it's, in, it's incredible. Right. And at the end, we ask the men before we leave their impressions. Mm-hmm. And we get some rather emotional. I bet you do reactions yeah. of how meaningful it is, has been for them mm-hmm. and the peaceful atmosphere, just the, the lodge, the retreat center itself, the small town church on the hill, yep. which I, yep. I, I <laughs> it's what a, a it's beautiful a, place. It is. It is. I finally got to go there this past winter. It's the first time I'd been there. And even in the winter, I thought it was, it was very beautiful. And I look forward to going back there in the summer when I can well, I don't really like the winter. So. <laughs> um, so do you have some some examples you can you can t- share with us about what other men have experienced there? Well, Ron's got some. He can go ahead. Well, what we did in our brochure that I'm looking at, mm-hmm. Renee, is some comments to answer those questions. Yeah. Or that question I should have said. Yeah. An example, a weekend to draw closer to Christ and to experience his love and desire for me. Mm-hmm. A spiritual reset to focus on what's important and what God would have me do to share his love. Yeah. An opportunity to reflect on where I am in my walk with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the, the comments that we have, have received on that last day and have recorded. And it, it's an incredible, the yeah. impact it has on those who attend. Yeah. So I know there are probably, I know my husband would be one of these. And he hates it when I throw him under the bus a little bit. But um, (laughs) there are going to be some men who might think this would be kind of interesting, but they might be hesitant um, because they might have some fear about sharing with other men, different things like that. What would you say to someone who is like, well, I'm not really sure I want to do that? Pat, (laughs) help us. (laughs) Yeah. Uh that's a common thing. It's mm-hmm. a common, uh, especially for men, fear yeah, to say, "Oh, I don't, I don't want to put myself in that situation." Um, but the the thing about the retreat is, you're going there for your own faith, mm-hmm. your own journey, and if that journey takes you to opening up at the retreat, great. You have mm-hmm. a chance to 
talk about where you are with your in your walk with the Lord. Um, get some feedback if you desire it, or you you can certainly stay quiet and listen sure. to the other men talk. There's yeah. no um, requirement to to speak in the small group sessions. Um, you know, usually the way we we try to organize it is when you get into your small group. There's a couple questions that the retreat master will leave us with to discuss mm-hmm. on. And we go around the table and, and guys can share if they want or pass. Um, so no one is in a position to be uncomfortable. Okay. So if they want to come and just experience it and be there and, and um, make it something where they, they take quiet time to reflect, that's totally okay. Um, but I would be surprised if, if at some point during the weekend they didn't open up a little bit right. and have some <laughs> input to provide to the group because right. it kind of draws that out of you. You know, yeah. you put yourself in this, um, you know, in the mix of it all, and you, you hear the leader speak, you hear the other men speak. There's a million thoughts we all have going through our own head, and sometimes, you know, you just want to put them out there. Yeah, get them out. Yeah. that I think that's helpful because I, I know that's that's definitely for men, especially. I mean, even for me as a woman, if I go to things like that, sometimes I'm like, I'm not sure I love that part, but that, but that, it's good for us to stretch ourselves and and allow ourselves to grow. I think that's the scariest thing we hear is that guys don't want to be in a small group where they have to open up, right? Share their feelings, right? right? That terrible. <laughs> I don't have that feelings. That what do you mean? <laughs> um, but no one's required to, right? Um, but at the end of the day, most guys end up, you know, having something to share. Whether right. it's and even like Ron said at the end, when we go around the whole group, every guy gets you know, 30 seconds or something just to share. Um, I can't remember a time where at that situation, somebody didn't have something to say. Right. Right. They always have some reaction that they want to bud. And we remind remind everyone at the beginning of the retreat. And again, at the end of the retreat Mm -hmm. of the 11th commandment, (laughs) what's said here stays here. Okay, good. I was like, I don't know what that commandment is. (laughs) And we made it up. That's a good one. Yeah, Yeah. of course. (laughs) So that everyone knows they can, open up right and not have the fear of somebody going back home saying you know what this guy said right Mm -hmm. right that's that's perfect um so you both have been a part of this for at least several years can you and maybe you've already said it but is there have you seen a change in your own faith life from going to this retreat even being part of the men's group absolutely um not that my faith is perfect and strong every day right but it's easier to get back on track when there's uh, a deviation from the path. So, yeah. you know, putting yourself in the mix and um, immersing yourself with uh, other men that are, you know, fighting for their own faith, mm-hmm. we're gonna um, we're gonna be tempted. We're gonna you know, we're gonna have sin. But the idea that w- what path was I on and getting back there a lot quicker, sooner, um, with more ease, um, that, that's the biggest change. You know, yeah. my faith is stronger. I think I'm closer with the Lord than I have been not perfect, but there's, um, uh, a place to go back to. Yeah. That's a lot easier to find. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to describe that. Ron, how about you? Well, it's just absolutely helped me grow in my relationship with Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and to also have more, if you will, a defense against the devil. Oh, yeah. And we mentioned putting on the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And we're in a fight. We're in a war. We are. And we're not going (laughs) to let him win if we can help it. Right. So that's been very meaningful to me. Good. Good. And we have to actually work at it if we're going to keep that armor. Yeah, yeah, we can't. All right, so we have about a minute left. Um, is there anything either of you would, would say to encourage men to go to the retreat that you haven't already said? I would ask, have you ever asked yourself, what's the meaning of life? Mm-hmm. Why am I here? The retreat helps answer that question. That's pretty deep, Ron. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> I just think if, if your faith is something that is important to you, but maybe you haven't made it a priority, Take the time to devote a weekend to it mm-hmm. um, and, and give yourself a chance to see what happens when you focus on it Yeah, for three days. Um, step away from the rest of what's keeping you busy and just give yourself a chance to be one-on-one with the Lord for a while. 
um, be in some silent prayer, be with other brothers, and, and see how the weekend changes you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so how do people sign up or get registered? Where do, how do they find out more? How about that? HolySpiritSF.org. Okay. Um, there is a link on the website to sign up. Um, we are about 55 guys registered. We okay. can still handle a few more. Okay. Um, we have private rooms and a cabin. The private rooms are actually all already sold out. Oh boy. So there's plenty of room in the cabin bunks. It's a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's rustic. A it's a quaint, it's rustic. <laughs> um, it's a quaint setting with, uh, you and your brothers on the bunks. Um, but yeah, Holy Spirit SF.org. Um, it's $175 for the weekend that covers all your meals that covers room in the cabin. Um, all you gotta do is get yourself down there. Yeah. Great. I believe, uh, the, if you're, I went on Holy Spirit's, uh, website and I couldn't find it right away. So I think it's Holy Spirit SF.org slash men's dash retreat, right? That, that will get you there right away. That will get you directly there. Yeah. Otherwise it's on. I can't uh, remember which tab it yeah. was. There's a, there's a tab that. Yeah. There. Yep. So men's dash retreat will get you straight there. All right. Thank you very much for being here. You guys, I hope the retreat goes very, very well. And, um, and I hope Deacon Ralph is awesome again. Thanks. Thank you. Renee. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. All right. Next week, we will have Father Andy Young on with us. Uh, he's going to talk about his experience uh, in Afghanistan as both a soldier and as a military chaplain in the years he was there, almost the entire time since 9-11. Um, and uh, we'll get a chance to talk to him and see what his experiences were. That is it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.